Ladies and gentlemen, this is Adam Kokesh here, still geeked out for the Libertarian Party of California State Convention. Just had an awesome gubernatorial debate. You'll be able to see that on this channel by the time we get this video up. So look back in the archives, check it out. A Zoltan Istvan versus Nicholas Wildstar debate. A lot of fun, wasn't it, Jeff? It was a rumble in the jungle. I'll tell you what. This is a group. And now, I last year in Santa Clara, we had our state convention. And... Susan Marie Weber and I were going to get up and we were going to do a panel on being elected libertarian. I went to Ted Brown, the state chair at the time, and I said, we've got three candidates for governor. Why don't we have a little impromptu forum? You know? He said, go ask them. I'm good with it if you are. So I talked to all three, and I, I'm, I'm sorry I can't remember the third guy, but I'll tell you what. They all said, yeah, let's do it. So the next day, that night I sat up and I wrote ten different questions relevant questions to be if you're going to run for governor. I got to moderate my first debate. Oh my God, that is so much fun. I mean, and Larry Sharp did a great job, didn't he? You know. Well, hold on. I got to properly introduce. This is Jeff Hewitt. He is the mayor of small town California, Cala Mesa. Population just 8,000. But um, he's also now running for county commissioner. And I want to get into that and the, the shift that that represents. But Jeff, excuse me, I'm sorry. Mr. Mayor, what, what's it like being addressed everywhere you go as Mr. Mayor? All right. Well, first of all, um, Eddie Van Halen, um, you know, uh, John Bon Jovi, they, they got nothing on being an elected, especially a mayor. <laughs> when you go somewhere and somebody goes, well, what do you do? And you go, well, I'm a mayor in a small town. This is a change. It's like, oh, wow, it's great to meet you. And I'm thinking in my mind, what was I, chopped liver before? I know a title is everything. The perception of things in people's mind is that Hollywood mayor that, you know, we have control over everybody's life. I have this huge key at home. I can open up any door in that. But the greatest thing is the huge scissors for the ribbon cutters. They're actually really sharp, and you got to be careful. So, you know, I mean, it takes you years and years and years to become actually a great mayor. But I'm going to tell you, Adam, my, <laughs> no, this is my role model, is Willie Marshall. The former mayor, a gay man in southern Utah. I saw him at the convention back in Orlando. And this guy, a city of 400 people, he came in there, he got elected. He did not carry the gay vote. He carried the polygamous vote, which is amazing. And he basically came in and he cut the expenses for that city 50% for each of the four years he was mayor. He legalized marijuana on day one. These are the things we can do. I mean, like I say, a city of 400. We, we own our lives. We dictate everything. This guy right here has got a right. You know, he may call himself an anarchist. I might call myself, I don't even know what I am. I just want to see government getting out of my life. When we work... Then, then you're an anarchist by the definition. Although I think libertarian is really the, the uniting term that we should embrace. But well, if you don't want rulers... I'm still, I'm still six months behind you. You know, the old joke, you know, the difference between a libertarian and an anarchist. It's the status in a libertarian. Okay, well, so, so, but when we get into, when we get into actually terms, it's fun, it's all that for the state of argument, but I'll tell you what, you know, I just watched a debate with two individuals that are doing our, that our cause proud. Last year, they were awkward on stage, they all kind of came out with a, almost a three-way tie. These guys are starting to get it down, and both of them, I'm telling you, we're coming out from different areas. We've got uh, a former rapper with a lot of charisma. He's starting to sound actually pretty down. You know what I'm saying? Zoltan Ishvan, there's only one of, you know, he's one of a kind. You know, amazing individual. But he's starting to embrace libertarianism, and I don't see him running away from it. This is going to be, in 10 to 20 years, libertarianism is going to be the one party. You know, I can't wait to hear the stories, like a few years from now, how did you become a libertarian? Well, I ran for office as a libertarian, and the party yelled at me and called me a statist the whole time, and then I lost, and then I realized what they were talking about, and then I, I mean, I almost see that happening with Bill Weld right now. It, it, it's pretty exciting to see even at, at that level. You know, here, here's the deal. Um, you know, I've been on the ex executive committee for the California Libertarian Party. I'm on the LNC right now as a Region 4 representative, and the one thing I, I realize about libertarians is they're, they're down. They will throw down at any minute to make their point. Now, that will drive you crazy. Sometimes I come home from an LSC meeting and I go, what did I get myself into? Then I can't wait till the next one. I got I to gotta say, that's a very beautifully politically correct say, way of saying, 
that, that libertarians like to argue and they won't shut up. No, 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 and they won't. But you know, but the whole thing is Karen Ann Harlos, which is, you know, used to be on the Radical Caucus. We sat down, and other other than the fact that we're both libertarians, we tried to find something that we held in common. We finally found it. We're going to start a caucus named after what we have in common. Karen Ann Harlos and I both hate cats. And I mean, no, no, no. <laughs> that way, we went through hours and hours having discussions, and there was nothing we agreed on. For instance, if I was president of the United States tomorrow, you know who's the first person that I would ask to be on my cabinet? It'd be Rachel Maddow. She and I agree about 1% of the time. Rachel Maddow is a genius. She sees things, and on any given day, she will say the most profound things. When you're going to be a leader, you have to put together a team that has you covered in every direction because any, any decision you make has repercussions. And when you can make the right decision, is the one that has everybody equally pissed off because then you might actually have made the right decision. Well, speaking of important decisions, with your political career, you're looking to give up the title of mayor to become county commissioner. You are an elected county, excuse me, county supervisor in California, you are, and that, that is to be a member of a five-person committee. So what, what's the appeal? Well, the appeal is I can mess up government on a much bigger scale. Okay, no, no, no. What I'm saying is I, I, have, I have accomplished something in my own city by setting up an in-house fire department that got rid of the union. You know, they're paid about half as much as the other professional firefighters. I'm delivering twice the bang to my citizens. And better, best yet, they're the only firefighters in California that have 401k style pension. So Calamace is set up to be in business for the next 100 years. Everybody else is going to be running around crazy. But see, for me, I look at things, I say, I, look, I focus on one thing that I can accomplish, and I go do it. You know, when I'm, when I'm a supervisor over half a million people in my district and two and a half million people in my county, when somebody says, what do you do? That same stranger comes, what do you do? I'm like, well, I have a county supervisor. They go, you know, I'm a supervisor at work. I, I get that, dude. Hey, that's cool. Again, when you do anything in politics, and I'm going to tell you this right now, and this is not, this is not BS. I don't care if I ever get any, any credit for anything I've ever done. I don't care about that. If I can convince other people to take this country in the way we need to go, and I go home and I know that I helped, that's, all, that's the only person you need to convince is yourself. We are a party built upon the individual. If you know that you've done everything you can for the cause of freedom, to get rid of the cause of tyranny, which is so omnipotent at all times for one man trying to impose their values on somebody else against their will. If you can do anything and leave that as a legacy to inspire one, two, three, or a million people, then you have attained the greatest status in life because you've changed humanity to the next level. We have things around the corner with technology, with longer lives and with newfound natural resources, the likes that we can only dream of. But it can only happen in a libertarian society. And the people here in this building right now are going to be driving the bus to get us there. Jeff Hewitt, ladies and gentlemen, you have a website you want to plug, sir? Yeah, you can, you can reach me at votehewitt.com. I have raised over $200,000. I'm pretty sure that's the record for anybody that's not a presidential candidate, and I'm going to win this race. And when I do, again, winning is easy. Governing is hard. And I've got my plan. I'm going to accomplish some great things. And who knows what? You know, if I live long enough and all the people that really want to take me out don't get me, maybe I'll see some really great things for our kids and grandkids. Awesome. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. 
Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.